comic in a book and we've all done some drawings and they're all going to be put into the book. And welcome to Mayfield School. It's nice to see everyone here this afternoon. And who's been to Tully House Museum? And what have you been to see in Tully House Museum? It's been a fascinating process to see how much these small children actually remember. Do you remember some of the sea creatures you might have met? Stingray. Stingray, brilliant. A seal. More whales. Starfish. Sea squid. We're going to start thinking about Drigsby's adventure. Ventures. So, shall we get down to doing some drawing? One of the main reasons that we decided to get involved in Whale Tales is because it was perfect for early years. Early years, it's very important to get the speech, communication, and language early on. We get the creative minds thinking. The back of them are so fiery, the sky turns on fire, and then some hit Drigsby, and Drigsby starts glowing pink. I was kind of dreading putting the book together because we've got 190 children. I'm guessing we've probably got about 1,500 drawings. So we've got uh, remarks, if you like, about each of those drawings. This is a baby whale. This is a jellyfish and a big fat sea snake. And they play fun chase together. Six schools that didn't work together, channeling this consciousness about Drigsby. The golden shark swam round Drigsby. And with a golden swoosh, Drigsby suddenly felt confident. All of these friends are When a child draws and you just say, oh, what's happening in the picture? You get the most poetic language. She wanted to be safe. A rainbow fish. Drigsby's jumping into the sea. That was the liberation, if you like, of the drawing that brought this kind of language, which I think has made the book so rich. Poor Duxby went down the tunnel. It was very dark. Stinging plants that hurt her fins. Shadows like spooky skeletons. There's a real issue across the country with children's language skills and vocabulary and the fact that this excites children to talk, it exposes them to new words that they've not heard of before. He will take Digsby to meet her ancestors. We have seen gains in our literacy, we've seen gains in the reading for example and children using imaginative language within their writing. There's big splashes, empty is thin. Real. She's a mammal. She's a really, really massive whale. She's a humongous whale. Ginormous. My twelve meters long. She dives. She died with plastic. She pretty cool in the rainbow. See her bones in the museum. Oh, there's the moon. So we're actually noticing the children are making rapid progress compared to other years that haven't had a project like this. Every one of you is going to get your very own book, so you can take it home and uh, do make sure that you make the big people read it. Read it to my mum and dad at home. The big people need to understand all about Grigsby and also about your fantastic imaginations. I think it's absolutely fabulous, amazing, I love it. It's nice to see all the kids together as well. Katie, who uh, put the book together, she's done a brilliant job using your drawings to really bring the story to life. So what I, I wanted to do was just get all of those super colourful, dense textures and just stack them up on top of each other for a really rich, vibrant world that I wanted to, to make from there. It's that full impact because when you say double A4 spread, it's like you could proper stick your head into it and be like full of colour. It's nice to have different Drigsby's of different expressions. There's one where she's like, she's trapped and somebody's drawn Drigsby like, <gasps> like that. And she's got like this big pink face. We never shied from the fact that Drigsby had died, that there is a real impact of plastics on our oceans and ultimately on our lives. And they just embraced the whole thing. That's the plastic monster! She was swimming amongst the plastic. 
quick space is stuck in the dark. The plastic monster blocked out the sun. Children need to know from a young age, I think, what's going on, what we're doing as humans to the planet, the environment, and how animals are suffering as a consequence to what, what we're polluting the world with. We want as many people as possible to hear about it and, uh, and be excited and want to do something about the environment. She's been quite conscious at home as well about you know what goes into the environment and into the seas and you know we've um, we've really been focusing on that a lot more at home since doing this project. You know she's been quite quite upset by it I suppose really because things need to change um, otherwise we're going to end up with with nothing, no wildlife, you know, no whales and a lot more bigger problems. It's real life.